This is the $20,000 Ford Maverick. And today we're gonna find out what it has in common with a Rolls Royce. Guys, I'm Jake, this is Gas Guzzlers, and this is the Ford Maverick. Let's get into it. All right, everyone, let's talk about the exterior of the Ford Maverick. Starting at the front right here, 8.6 inches of ground clearance. So this thing's not gonna be an off-road monster, but it's not meant to be. Again, you have that front wheel drive on this model. And you know what? I'm sure there are gonna be some Maverick lift kits on the aftermarket very soon. There's a lot of aftermarket um, kind of support for this vehicle, or there will be soon. And we'll talk about that in a bit. LED headlights are standard, which actually really impressed me. Upper trim models can get some LED accent lighting. And something interesting is that Ford wanted to widen the headlights and grill and combine them to try to give the truck a bit of a wider look from the front. Let's move around to the side. Now let's talk about the side and the construction of the Maverick. It's a unibody vehicle. It's not body on frame like a traditional pickup truck like its big brother, the F-150. What's that mean? It means it's gonna drive more like a car or an SUV, similar to the Honda Ridgeline, which is another pickup truck that is a unibody construction. Also, to, uh, in terms of construction, this vehicle uses uh, steel instead of aluminum like its brother, the F-150. Speaking of steel, also 17 inch steel wheels. They look actually not as bad as I thought with this Velocity Blue. For a $20,000 truck, they did a really nice job with the exterior here. Another $20,000 kind of feature, you have manual adjustable mirrors and they don't have the little wire things on the inside. I don't know if you've seen those on a manual adjustable mirror car before. You actually have to come out here and press on the mirror to get the adjustment you want. Only one configuration for the Maverick here, and that's gonna be this crew cab with the four and a half foot bed. Ford says that if you put the tailgate down, get a tail uh, a bed extender, you can get around six and a half feet of length back there. And in addition, something kind of interesting about the bed is this. You'll see that they have these plastic bed rail that goes up and all the way up the back of the vehicle here. Ford says they did that to prevent dents in the truck. So really nice kind of small design features at the side of this vehicle to make it work with that $20,000 price point. At the rear of the Maverick, there's a lot of features you would expect for the price point. For example, halogen tail lamps, and then if you put your bed down, you'll find it is not damp. In addition, no towing connections on this hybrid model down here. You can option, of course, trailering connections. And if you did do that, then with this hybrid model, you could tow about 2,000 pounds of uh, stuff and then you could put about 1,500 pounds of payload in the bed right here. Um, you can option a $155 manual sliding glass window back here, but what's really exciting about the Maverick is the flex bed. Let's talk about that. Now let's talk flex bed. Flex bed is basically Ford's term for this really modular bed that you can modify and do all sorts of cool stuff to. Ford, of course, is happy to sell you their own accessories to put back here, but they also give you the option to make your own. Here's what I mean by that. They put these cool little dents in the bed and you can put pieces of wood down to make things like false floors or a bike rack. You can make a DIY bike rack and then slide it into the back of the Maverick. In addition, this bed is definitely usable as is. Ford says you can put a four by eight piece of plywood back here over the wheel arches. Ford's also made some really neat touches. For example, when it comes to power, you could get the Lariat trim, which runs a full-size power outlet back here, but Ford's run the power back here anyway. So you can actually take off these panels and you can access some uh, different power. I believe it's 12 volt. And then you can actually hook that up to any accessories you get back here. In addition, there are little QR codes throughout the bed that you can scan and Ford will show you how you can use that part of the flex bed. That is a really neat little feature. One additional nice thing about this bed is that it's actually because this is a shorter truck the lift in height is under 30 inches so even shorter people won't have too hard of a time lifting stuff into the back here if you're enjoying the video be sure to like and subscribe to gas guzzlers for more weekly automotive content all right guys let's get back into it under the hood of this maverick you're going to find a two and a half liter engine which is paired to a hybrid system now this total system has gonna have a combined output of around 191 horsepower and 155 pound-feet of torque, and it's gonna send power through a CVT to the front wheels. 
Then there's an additional upgrade two liter EcoBoost engine you can get, which puts out 250 horsepower and 277 pound-feet of torque through an eight-speed transmission. And that can send power to either just the front wheels or all wheels, depending on which packages you get. In addition, that upgrade engine can tow up to 4,000 pounds if you get the 4K tow package. So a pretty impressive little truck here. Let me know which engine option you would go for because while the added power of the upgrade engine may be nice, we've been getting around 38 miles to the gallon in this vehicle with mixed use driving. So it is a really impressive engine for this little truck. And now you join me on the interior of the Maverick. This is a really interesting interior to talk about because Ford did a really successful job of making the interior out of cheap materials, but not making it look cheap. For example, this is all hard touch plastic up here, but with the texture they've given this material, it actually looks like a pretty nice fabric. And that, mat that matches the seats right here, which by the way, you're not gonna find any heated seats or ventilated seats in this particular XL trim. However, these seats are very comfortable. Uh, they have really great padding to them, especially on uh, the butt side of the seat. In terms of just the interior layout, everything is easily reachable. There's not a whole lot to reach. This is a pretty basic truck. No controls to reach for your mirrors, for example. Your windows are power, but no uh, automatic up and down, you know, no one touch feature like that. So the interior here is basic, but basic is not bad. For $20,000, they did a really spectacular job. So let's talk infotainment. There is not a lot here. You really just have uh, your audio and phone controls in here and some basic settings. What Ford is expecting most people to do is to use the Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Yes, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay are included on even the base trim, which is fantastic because who cares if the infotainment isn't full featured? Then you just plug in that system and you are ready to rock and roll. So that's how you get your maps. That's how probably most people are going to use their music with Spotify. That is just a really, really cool feature from Ford and I think that's a big selling point of this vehicle. Um, one interesting thing is just this little open space right here. As far as I know, there is not a larger screen that you can option that takes up this space. And the problem with this little cubby is it doesn't slant downward. So anything you put in here could just fall out on hard acceleration pretty easily. However, the screen itself has been very well done. Really like that Ford's just kind of left it to Apple and Google. And by the way, that is wired Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, um, not wireless. Now let's take a quick look at your center gauge cluster. All physical right there. I told you that this car has something in uh, common with the Rolls Royce. Here it is. The Maverick on the left has that power gauge and it shows you what percent of power you're using. For those of you who are familiar with Rolls Royce, Rolls Royce, instead of a tachometer, it uses a power reserve gauge, which is essentially the inverse of this Ford power gauge. Rolls Royce shows you what percent of the power you have in reserve. Ford shows you what percent of power that you are actually using. So there is a little commonality between the 2022 Ford Maverick and the Rolls Royce. Let me know if you see any other Rolls Royce similarities uh, in the comments below. You do have this little digital display in the middle right there. You can see it has basic trip info, and I think most people are probably just gonna keep it on this digital speedometer, which by the way, you can actually change to be one of four different things, an EV coach, fuel economy, or a calm screen. Um, so that's a nice little feature. And scrolling through, it's just your music, your phone, and your general uh, kind of settings for the truck. So again, I think most people just throw it on the speedometer and leave this be. Nice little system from Ford for a $20,000 truck. Now let's take a look at the center area of the vehicle. It's pretty simple, lots of physical knobs and buttons right here. Um, something I do like is on the climate controls, they have the little digital display for your temperature. This vehicle has a single climate zone. However, it does have automatic climate control, which is a nice feature to see. Down below, you, do, you don't have any like charge, wireless charging down here, but you do have USB ports, including a USB-C port. I love to see that future proofing. In addition, you have cup holders with the little physical nubs. Ford does the best nubs in the industry. They have the mechanical nubs. Uh, Jeep has the little rubber domes and then like Toyota recently has been bumming me out. They have no nubs in their vehicle. Ford is leading the industry in cup holder technology right now. You have a hockey puck shifter on this vehicle parking brake, and then you have three buttons down, easily reachable right here. Those are gonna turn off your traction control, change the mode the vehicle is in and turn on the brake hold. And now you join me in what I think is one of the biggest selling points of this vehicle. If I was going to give you two reasons to buy this truck, one would be the powertrain, that hybrid powertrain on the base model, and the second would be this rear area. Why? Because it is a really great crew cab on a $20,000 truck. 
You can easily fit four six foot tall adults in this vehicle. Headroom is plenty, legroom, there's also plenty of legroom for a six foot adult to sit behind another six foot adult. And look, there's no um, air vents back here. There's only one cigarette lighter back here. You don't even have a pull out thing in the middle, but that's not the point. This is a $20,000 pickup truck that you can fit four six foot adults in. That is absolutely crazy to me. And this rear area, your passengers are gonna be happy here because the seats are actually pretty comfortable. And then there's also some cool storage features back here. Now I want to show you some cool rear storage features here. First of all, you can lift up this rear bench and you can see that reveals a pretty deep little storage area. Um, you could probably fit some groceries in there, maybe a laptop you want to hide away. It's a little shallower on the passenger side because that's where the battery is, but it's pretty deep right here on this driver's side. Putting down the Mavericks bench by pulling the little strap, you can also fold down this top part. And that's interesting, not because of just the storage uh, availability that it gives you, but what's cool is it just reveals bare sheet metal. And that's a great example of a way that Ford has cut costs in this vehicle that's not gonna affect the driver on their everyday routine. So that is just a neat little tidbit about the Ford Maverick. I did get to go for a spin in the Maverick, but unfortunately I did not have the footage. So we're gonna do a quick voiceover. I was really impressed with the Maverick, specifically that powertrain. The hybrid was never lacking power. It never let me down and it could do more than I expected on electric power alone. It really was a fun little truck to zip around roundabouts in and it handled itself competently. This vehicle handles a lot like a crossover. Remember, it has that unibody construction and that's great for everyday use. Overall, I keep coming back to that powertrain. It really was unbelievable for what it is. I've driven in all sorts of trucks, but no truck powertrain has ever impressed me as much as this one has. For what it is, it really is incredible. Good job, Ford. There's no getting around it. Ford had to cut corners to make this work. It's a $20,000 pickup truck. But you know what? Cutting corners is not a bad thing, at least in this case, because Ford's done it really successfully. They've cut the stuff that you're gonna not touch that often, the mirror controls, the area behind the rear seats. Sure, it's not the prettiest, but you know what? The stuff that you do use all the time, they got right. You have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. You have that hybrid system. The stuff that's most important to buyers, it's here and it's done not just right, it's done well. So an excellent job by Ford here. I think they are going to sell a lot of these. They already have, in fact. They've ran out of basically production allocations for the start of the year. This is gonna be on streets all across America. And I think that the team at Ford should be really proud. And if you're considering a small pickup, well, this really is a fantastic option. Folks, thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, consider liking and subscribing to Gas Guzzlers for more weekly on-mo content like this 2022 Ford Maverick review. All right, folks, have a great week. Take care, and we'll see you in next week's video.